welcome to I Heart Art. I'll be your artistic guide for today. I'm Madeline Culp. I'm very happy to be with you and drawing this chameleon. Um, it's not a native Australian animal. It is uh, native to Africa, mostly Madagascar, and I normally draw natives, but I couldn't resist this little fella. Um, I thought this design, it really reminded me of those 1980s, 1990s hang in there posters with the little kittens. It's like the chameleon version, and I just love his um, disgruntled face. It's bringing me joy, so I hope it brings you joy too. You can follow along at home, um, just grab a piece of clean white paper from your printer or anywhere. Um, you can use a ballpoint pen if you don't have these fine nip pens at home, but um, I'm using these, any brand will do. And to get that nice uh, lizard texture, I'm using a variety today. So I'm using a really bold one for the outlines and I'm going um, right down to 0 0.1, which is super fine, because I think I'm gonna be doing some dots. <laughs> So, not very complicated stuff here with me today. Um, I really like to play with um, voids, so a lot of my stuff is just like contrasting black and whites and finding out how to make something three-dimensional, two-dimensional on the page. Because I can't draw that fast, I gave myself a little head start earlier. Um, I've got a little rough outline of the shape. As you can see, I don't um, ever use a draft, which maybe is really silly, but I find that it makes the artwork a little bit more alive and capturing the character of the animal. So to continue on this sort of um, shape, I'm gonna start with the 0.3, which is, um, yeah, not too fat at all, but um, enough to get a bit of detail. And I'm gonna continue on with my favorite part of the chameleon, which is this head part with the um, slight overbite, which I never really noticed until I really started looking at a chameleon, because how often do you do that? And now I'm gonna do the underbite. So it's just gonna come out a little bit further, and I'm just gonna carry it down. <laughs> It's already looking like a goober, which is what I was going for. So that's quite a big overbite I've done, but what I can do is go back with a thicker pen. And I like to do this at the end to kind of finish off my drawings as well and really shape it. So you can kind of do the shading with that 1.2 pen. I tried to look for a thicker one and you're getting into texture territory then, which I don't know, some people might want it but I've avoided texture so far. You'll notice while I'm filling this in, the way that I'm pressing the pen is gonna have a really different effect and that can add to the character. I think a slight increase in the line thickness can really like make your animal happy or sad. It can give it any kind of emotion. Um, and if you want to practice before um, you start drawing, you can always just practice on a spare piece of paper. If I'm pushing really hard, you can see the thickness. If I'm going really lightly, and then if I'm going on the side as well. So just keep in mind that all of these things can really influence how your drawing turns out. Um, and you can also see if I hold my pen, I'm getting a spot. So might be um, something you're looking for, but just keep that in mind if you're stopping and thinking about the washing and then continuing on, that's really gonna show in your drawing. So let's continue on, shall we? We're gonna do the thicker outer, but I think I'm not gonna do the inner so much outer. <laughs> that does not make sense. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do the inner lines much thicker because I wanna work with detail on those. So it's a pretty, simple way and I'm gonna just make this um, meeting of the jaws a little bit more pronounced but not as thick as the underneath. So now I'm gonna go into defining the space between the upper and lower jaws and I'm gonna do that with a 0.3 if you're playing bingo at home. Um, now to make a little bit of difference I want to capture the ways and the shapes and the directions of these scales so in my design, I've kind of done um, a line that follows that inner jaw line, so, which is kind of what I can see here as well. So I love turtles and lizards, these patterns that they have, where you can um, 
really get lost in the meditation of it. It's just lovely to get these little circle, rectangle sort of shapes as close as possible, but maintaining that white for the void. And I'm going to try and do these ones by the lower jaw bigger because I want to um, create movement in the jaw by making them smaller as I go along. And again, just, just lose yourself. Forget about perfectionism because nature is, you know, all about odd shapes. And we're not going for hyper-realism here. I really respect hyper-realism, but um, I don't think I'm the type of person that could get it ever that perfect. <laughs> And this is more about fun. So we've got the two rows going this way. I'm going to kind of try and create some movement down the jaw now. So I'm going to change my shape and my size a little bit. And I'm making sure that I'm, because I'm working with ink, I'm not getting too close to the other lines I've already drawn to avoid bleeding. Um, Cause that is, Okay, but it will just make everything look a little bit less distinct. So, just continue on. This is, you know, the fun thing about drawing is that you can do this while you're listening to a podcast or <laughs> music because there's a lot of repetition. And speaking of repetition, I think I'm going to let you go grab a cup of tea while I continue this repetition and you can join me back after the break on iHeartArt. Thanks for joining us on iHeartArt today. We're getting back to this chameleon that's hanging in there. The optimism through that little grumpy face is what we're trying to capture. So we did the jaws and we're going to move on to the eyes, um, which is pretty spectacular in a ch chameleon. Um, and turning that into 2D, um, I was gonna go for a little bit of a design like this. Um, the eye takes up a huge amount of space as well on the chameleon's head. So, okay to go wild and crazy with your eyes. We're gonna start about here. I'm just gonna give it a go. Nice round circle. Um, and to capture that telescopic eye detail that chameleons have. Um, I'm going to just join it up with um, more circles that are smaller. And I'm positioning her eye looking down as if to be like, why am I up here? Um, so I'm going to make sure the little pupil is at the lower end. And then I'm going to just, I might just do a little bit more one to capture that. So these little circles are actually skin and they've still got those little um, bumps and marks on them. So I'm gonna do a bit more detail. I think to begin with, I'm gonna just go thick on the outer ring just to give that a bit more depth and kind of um, indicate that that's like the base in the start of the eye area. When I was looking up about chameleons, I read that their eyes um, are telescopic, so that's how they can actually like zoom right in, like a camera, which is pretty amazing. And they operate independently, so Imagine trying to get away with something with a chameleon. They'll, you'll never do it. They will always see you. And then I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker. And then we're going to go here as well. I kind of don't want to get too much closer to that pupil because I think it'll get a bit mucky if we get a little bit closer. And you can see that the thickness of the lines are a little bit different. And... Um, you wanted to kind of indicate that the eye is looking down, we can kind of make all of these lines at the bottom a bit thicker. When it's giving a bit more weight and it draws the viewer's eye to the movement of, of the chameleon's eye. 
don't know how many more times I can say the word I. Um, so we will now try to fill in this skin part. I want to go really thin for that because I'm not working with a lot of space. So I'm going to get back to my 0.1 pen. Um, and if you're doing this with a ballpoint pen at home, just go really light on your pressure. And to try and capture all of that detail in such a small space, I'm going with dots. And I'm going to make my dots more dense at the bottom of the eye, and then I'm going to make it less dense as we get towards the pupil. Well, it's not really the pupil, it's actually just the eyeball, isn't it? So you look in this, this reference, you can see that. So yeah. I also learnt something about chameleons I didn't know today, that there is a chameleon that lives in Madagascar that has the shortest lifespan of any four-legged animal. Apparently it can live for just, just four months. Imagine that. They hatch, they get out, they rampage to look for a mate, they mate and then they all die together. So, you know, have a good time while you can, I guess. And then the longest living chameleon was, I found, was nine years. So a little bit more time to, you know, enjoy the finer things in life. Crickets, cicadas, whatever they like to feast on. Apparently larger chameleons can actually eat other lizards. So. And so here, as I go in, I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of making it a little bit looser. So then that way, hopefully, I get a little bit of depth in my very 2D drawing. Um, in the reference drawing, I've done some little movement lines, so I might do that as well. And I'm going to go a bit thicker with a 0 0.3 for that. And I'm going to do it in um, sort of the inner, inner eye just so that we can kind of really make that direction felt. So the mouth and the eye, I reckon, is where the character's at with a lot of the animals I draw, but also the hands are very important too, or arms, or paws, as it could be. So I'm gonna continue the drawing around the eye. I'm gonna go fine again, because I'm not working with a lot of space, and I'm gonna just kind of draw a little bit of movement too, which I guess is a little bit more of a character cartoon sort of choice but I just want to make sure that that is defined and then I'm going to go back to scales so the scales are amazing they change shape we've got some longer shapes here and then we've got some circles and I can see some squares so that's what I'm going to go with I'm going to go with some of the same technique I did where to kind of make the viewer's eye follow the shape of the head. I'm going to start with a bit of a longer rectangle circle shape. And then to really pop out the eye, I'm going to try and do circles really small around. So again, I guess that gives that illusion that there's movement in this space. It's not a static space like the top of the head. Although I see on this reference chameleon, he has these little spikes going on, which I really like, and I didn't have in my original design. I might add them in as well. So yeah, just following that. I'm not going with the smaller ones around the little character line that I've drawn. I'm gonna go bigger, but when you're doing this with reptiles or turtles, just think about the way that the image flows and kind of follow that. So the animal's going downwards, so I'm gonna kind of try and make my little reptilian skin follow that motion. And that will really help, again, bounce your viewer's eyes where you want it to go and the direction you want it to go. And it's also a way that you can define certain features. So I'm going to keep doing this because it's really fun but very repetitive while you take a break. And I'll see you soon on iHeartArt. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to I Heart Art. I'm Madeline Culp and I'm drawing a chameleon with you today as we carry on. I did a little bit while you were on your break um, and I wanted to do the tail with you. So, for the tail, um, in all the references that I've seen, um, chameleons wrap their tail around things. <laughs> They're different to most lizards that they actually can hang from their tail and it doesn't drop off if it gets bitten. So, to emphasize this mobility, we're gonna continue our chameleon's tail around the little branch. So, um, we're gonna go in front of the branch um, and then we're gonna go behind and we're gonna actually get the tip to meet. Um, so it gives a little bit of a sense that it is grabbing onto the branch. So we'll go over the lines a little bit here. Because I'm sort of rushing, I'm not really being too careful with my lines and I'll go over that with the thicker texture in the end to really finish the drawing off. Um, and the motif that I've been using so far is that in parts of the body where there is movement, I've been doing the really tight dots. Um, and I'm going to continue that with that idea on the tail as well. So because the tail scales, they're pretty detailed to be honest. Um, it's almost a rhyme. And I'm going to get in there with some dots to say, kind of signify that this is a moving part. Um, I'm going to move them kind of wherever I feel like there's too much white space. I'll just pop them in there and I'll creep them up the tail as we go further. And when I feel like we're getting to, you know, maybe more solid ground, I'm going to start really lingering on all of the dots to get that ink bleed to gradually increase the size. Then we can get more into the tail meets the body space. And from that space, I would start my little scales again. And because I want to draw the eye down the tail, I'm going to do longer scales. And I'm going to do them pretty tight to begin with so that they're all touching. It's almost like if you were to look at it, it's no gaps in between all of the scales touching. And as we go up into the body, I'm going to get them to have a little bit more distance. And hopefully that gives that illusion of a moving into the more solid area of the animal's body. Um, so you could really do this all day. If you really need a little bit of uh, relaxation and hyper focus in your life, this is something I would highly suggest doing because uh, it's endless. All right, so as you can see, I'm getting bigger. And the other point I wanted to use the time to talk about was this fun little bit of the underneath in between the two back legs. So I wanted to make sure that point um, looked different. So as I continue on, I'll continue with the scales, changing up the sizes where I need and making sure I'm following the direction of the animal. And in between the legs, I want to make it, you know, like a cat or a dog's belly, where it's sparse. And that's going to indicate that this moves a little bit as well. And then I went that point where the legs join the body. I want to kind of bring in a little bit of scales to kind of define that region, define that feature. And then I want to do another graduated um, markings for the rest of the leg so you know just use your judgment how much or how little of this you want to do <laughs> if you're really on a roll just go for it no one's gonna stop you live your life but I'm gonna stop around here and then I'm gonna start with the thicker dots doing that technique where you're kind of really pushing the pen in 
if you're using a ballpoint pen at home, maybe just um, go over them because you're not going to get this ink bleed with a ballpoint. And then I'm going to go a little bit lighter in the middle of the leg and then I'm going to go the same darkness and heavy handedness at the top of the leg. <laughs> this way I'm kind of pointing out those um, starts and finishes of the feature. So, and also I've chosen to go just dark on the claws and the hands and the feet just to kind of give it a little bit of contrast between the rest of the drawing. So then there's a lot of this going on. <laughs> and because we are getting this all in one episode, I promise, <laughs> I'm just going to stop there on that section and I'm just going to talk about um, the back. So I want to make sure that we've got some distinctions in the back. Otherwise, it's going to just look all like you can't tell which way is up and which way is down. So I'm going to start with different shapes. I'm still on the 0.3, but you could even go finer if you really want. If you go thicker, it'll make it grow faster, but you might lose a little bit of detail. And of course, I've chosen a very detail heavy drawing to do for you in this uh, short show, which was very smart. Um, so I guess I'm kind of approaching it like I would a turtle with the turtle shell um, where it's got kind of bigger markings at the top of the turtle shell. This sounds like I've thought about it a lot. Really, truthfully, um, <laughs> it's really free for all. These are just some ideas I have. Don't know if they're very correct. But um, anyway, it makes for a fun afternoon. And coming up to this arm that's abnormally high. I don't know why I've done it so high. I'm going to do that movement dots again and then I'm going to go into triangle scales for the rest of the body. So this is going to take me a while. So what I might do is I might just go ahead and do this in my own time and uh, we'll come back and we'll show you what it looks like at the end. But for now, I'll sign off on this chameleon that's hanging in there doing the best he can, which I hope is the same as you, the same as I. Thank you again for joining us on iHeartArt.